so many months after so much so so many months and i i didn't meet <laughs> personally the guests of the travel department um i my name my name is renate i work as a tour guide in the garda i started many many years ago 41 years ago a lifetime ago but i'm with travel department since 2005 and um, yes, Legarda is, in my point of view, one of the most beautiful holiday des destinations. You could ask me why. Um, there is so much to do and see in Legarda. Um, Legarda, we travel department has holiday packages for the northern part of the lake. So we include um, the northern part of the lake with the little town of Riva del Garda, which is the second largest town on the lake, and where we do have several hotels, two hotels, but we talk about the hotels afterwards. And not to forget also our two hotels in Limone and one hotel in Malchesine. But again, we are going to talk about the, um, the hotels later, later on. So virtual tour, um, we made a few videos, we, we recorded a few videos in a way that you can see uh, how your, your week uh, looks like in Le Garda. Enjoy, I hope that you will enjoy the time that we spent together. And at the end of our presentation, of course, there will be time for some questions. And maybe there is a few guests who I know, and I would like to greet them um, with pleasure, of course. <laughs> So Riva del Garda. Riva del Garda, as I said earlier, is the second largest town on the lake, situated in the north. Uh, by the way, Lake Garda is the largest Italian lake. Uh, the length from Riva down to the south lies around the 52 kilometers. And only the northern part of the lake, as you can see on this slide, is encircled by beautiful mountains. And the first question is usually, what is the name of these mountains in Le Garda? So these mountains just above Riva, the background of Riva, the backdrop of Riva, are the pre-Alps. And uh, during one of our uh, trips, an optional excursion, we're going to show you the area that you can spot just behind Riva on top of the mountains. So Riva del Garda with a little, with, with, the, with a small jetty, where the public boats do depart several times per day. The lovely prom, you can see the umbrellas, the lovely cafes. Okay, we can go further with the first video. So regarding the, regarding the transfers, um, we do have transfers from, um, no, from your country, so from the UK and also from the Republic of Ireland to the airports of Verona, we use the airports of Venice, Milan, and Bergamo. And this is how um, uh, a transfer looks like. Have a look. Finally, we've arrived in Italy. Oh, I'm so excited. I've got my bag from the carousel. Now I just need to find the guide. Where is she? Oh, there she is. Hi, welcome in Italy. Travel department? Yes, yes. yes. Are you going to Legarda? Yes, exactly. May I show you where the bus is? Oh, fantastic. Oh, please. Before we go, is there time to have a cup of tea? Mm, no, unfortunately, there is no time, but we will be in the hotel in about an hour. Oh, wow, it's so warm. You feel that heat? <laughs> yes, it is indeed. The bus is just over there with the logo of the travel department. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board. First of all, on behalf of the travel department, um, we're going towards our holiday day destination at the moment. And it takes about an hour traffic permitting to get from the airport in the Riva del Garda. So I would like to introduce a very important person on the bus. His name is Mario, and we frequently call him Super Mario. And he is going to bring us as good as possible to Riva del Garda. So if you're all ready, fasten your seatbelt, sit back, relax and enjoy the countryside, the landscape. Finally. 
Yes, Riva, again, lovely colourful houses at the main jetty of Riva del Garda. Um, our holiday package, the travel department's holiday package, includes three excursions. And we're going to show you these excursions, the boat trip on the lake with Limone and Malcesine, a lovely day trip to Verona, Romeo and Juliet, the amphitheatre, and not to forget, of course, um, the day trip to Venice, which is one of my favourite day trips of the, of the, of the week. Um, the hotels. So we are here in Riva del Garda. Um, travel department works with the Grand Hotel Liberty many, many years. About 25 years ago, I think the travel department started with, with only Hotel Liberty. And just, just an overview of, a, of a host from Hotel Liberty. So you see the main building, the swimming pool, the dining room, and one of the one of the bedrooms. That is our four star hotel. But we always have we oh, sorry we always have an option for three star hotels as well, which is this lovely Hotel Brione Green Resort. Uh, also, Hotel Brione is situated very close to the lake. I forgot to say that also Hotel Liberty's location is very very close to the lake, so the prom is easily reachable on foot from both hotels. And on the slide for Hotel Liberty and on this slide of Hotel Brione Green Resort, our three star option in Riva del Garda. Uh, you can, the bar is very lovely in Hotel Brione. The gardens are beautiful as well, like in Hotel Liberty. Not to forget the dining room with a lovely view over the gardens and the bedroom of Hotel Brione Green Resort. That was Riva del Garda. Um, at about two miles from Riva, along the other side of the lake, there is a small town named Torbole. And uh, in Torbole, we have the option uh, for a four-star hotel, Hotel Piccolo Mondo. Like the other two hotels in Riva, the gardens are very lovely. Gorgeous swimming pool here as well. A uh, view, a panorama, short, a small picture of the big dining room and one of the bedrooms facing the beautiful green gardens of Hotel Piccolo Mondo, our four star option. Limone. Limone is situated along Riva's side of the lake. So Torbole, eastern shore of the lake, Riva, Limone, western shore of the lake. A simple three star hotel, Hotel Europa, very close to the mountains with lovely views over the lake as well. Again, like earlier pictures, photos of the swimming pool, the lovely terrace with the tiny boats. You can see uh, in the far distance on the left, you can see the lemon gardens and one of the bedrooms in Hotel Europa. That was our three-star option. We do have a four-star hotel as well named Hotel Alexander. Same comment, uh, the swimming pool inside of the hotel and the bedrooms. Uh, Hotel Alexander is situated very close to the lake, close to the jetty. Limone is a lovely little town. We do have a, another slide of Limone afterwards, so more news about Limone later, later on. So that was Limone, our two options in Limone, 10 kilometers from Riva. Other side of the lake, Malcesine, so Torbole, Malcesine, eastern shore of the lake. Above Malcesine, uh, the highest mountain on Le Garda, the name of this mountain is Monte, Monte Baldo, 2,218 meters high. And this is our option for, we do organize, um, travel department organizes so, um, excursions, holiday packages for solo travelers. And this year we choose Hotel Majestic in Malcesine, a four-star hotel, swimming pool, Malchesine, and I will give you general information about Malchesine during uh, the rest of our time together. Thank you. So Riva del Garda again. Riva del Garda where the beautiful, the scenic road starts, a tunnel road that connects Riva del Garda with the southern part of the lake. If you do ask me what 
area do you prefer in Le Garda? I have to say Riva. I don't live in Riva myself. I live in the town of Arco. We talk about Arco afterwards, which is my little hometown. But Le Garda, and that's my experience also with the guests of the travel department, you're always very pleased to see the backdrop of the mountains. So Riva del Garda is a combination of the lake and the backdrop of the Italian pre, pre Alps. Um, on your left hand side, on, on the picture, on the slide on the left, you can see Riva's power station, Riva's hydroelectric plant, fed by the water of a small alpine lake situated on the other side of the mountains above Riva. And um, this um, power station is well worth a visit during your free time. Again, the jetty, the tower of the Middle Ages. Uh, you can climb up to the tower to the very, very top with lovely views from the top of the tower named Aponale at the main port of Riva. And if you look towards the right, you can see just a small part of Riva's castle, which houses the um, a civic museum with a gorgeous art gallery. And close to that castle, our first day trip starts, which is a boat trip on the lake. But first, an overview of Riva, lovely video. Come on, we are going to take this lovely boat trip today. The name of the boat is Moby Dick. Again, mind your step, be careful. So the Moby Dick is a private boat and this private boat um, will be our boat for the first excursion during the week, which is an easy going excursion. We start at a civilized time of the day and there is not much walking involved and it is very relaxing. Huh? There is an upstairs, there is a downstairs where you can sit inside and of course, with sunny days, you have fantastic views over the, over the mountains. This boat trip starts close to the castle. You have seen that castle a few seconds ago. The castle where the museum, where you can visit the museum during one of your free days. And in the internal courtyard of La Roca, which is the name of Rivas Castle, they do organize concerts. And the first concert was organized yesterday. Yesterday, as we had a bank holiday in Italy yesterday, it was the 2nd of June, which is the day that the Italian Republic was founded, 1946. And um, so for the very first time uh, this year, an uh, open air concert was organized in the, um, in the castle, castle of Riva. But let's go back to the boat trip on the lake. We, it takes about, let's say, half an hour before we disembark in Limone. Limone is a very small village. Limone has a bit more than thousand residents, but Limone is visited, no, Limone has hotel accommodation for about 10,000 people. So in Limone, we have some time. We have time for a cup of coffee. I don't know if you do appreciate Italian coffee, a cappuccino, an espresso, or a simple cup of tea, or why not an ice cream? So a coffee stop. And I have experienced that, especially the women are very pleased with a stop in Limone. 
as limone, uh, limone's alleyways are lined with gorgeous shops. If you're keen on handbags, on shoes, on leather coats, that is a place where you have to be in Limone. But if you don't like shopping, huh, uh, you can see on the slide as well that there is two churches well worth a visit. And Limone used to be famous because of lemon growing huh, during the past centuries ago. The main source of income for the population in Limone used to be lemon growing. And eventually in Limone, you have time to visit one of these lemon gardens. In the 1950s, 1960s, the, um, the lemon gardens make place for hotels and restaurants. I know that we have many visitors from the Republic of Ireland. Fortunately, we do have guests from the UK as well, but a very famous Irishman used to spend about 10 days in Limone a couple of years ago, and his name is um, Michael D. Higgins. <laughs> Very down to earth. So um, after our coffee stop in Limone, the same boat will collect us in Limone. And it takes about 20 minutes before we'll arrive in Malchese. And just have a look at this lovely video about Malchese, Malchese with Montebaldo and the castle. So we have disembarked in Malchese, situated along the eastern shore of the lake. And in Malchese, we're going to have some lunch. Lunch, a bit of sightseeing, Eventually, you could visit the beautiful castle of the 13th century. And maybe on one of your free days, you could go and buy a cable car in Malchesine on top of Montebaldo. I will show you where to go. So the cable car in Malchesine. Uh, at the very, very top, you see the end station, but you have to take two cable cars to get to the top. The first cable car goes up to half way, and over there you have to change and you have to pick the second cable car that brings up to the very, very top. So that was my chasing. So um, I don't know if you have seen the patches of snow on top of Montebaldo. Uh, during this time of the year, there is the last patches of snow, but that snow will disappear in a very short time as we do experience this week again, quite high temperatures. So the, the snow will disappear. But in the winter time, if you do visit us during the winter time, we do have groups in the winter time as well. You can see the snow capped mountains above Lake Garda. So that was our first day trip. And then we continue with the day trip to Verona. Yes, Verona, uh, UNESCO World Heritage site as well, like Venice and the Dolomites. And um, there is about 80 kilometers. So we cover about 80 kilometers between the northern part of the lake and the city of Verona. During the journey, lovely views, lovely panoramas of the mountains, but you will see that as soon as we do arrive in Verona, the landscape changes completely, as you can see uh, on this slide. Uh, Verona with the River Adige, the churches, the amphitheater, Verona um, has, a, has a very long history. Verona is the city in the world after Rome, of course, with the best preserved Roman monuments. Uh, during the next picture, no, sorry, during the next video, we will show you uh, a, few, um, a few important monuments of the time of the Romans. But not only history in Verona, not to forget also Juliet's balcony. So arriving in Verona, we start with the tour by coach in a way that you have just an introduction to the city of Verona. And then we start with the walk, leaving the coach park. We pass on foot the amphitheater, where during the summertime this year, the opera season starts on the 19th of June, where during the opera season, world famous operas um, are organized, open air opera concerts and other concerts as well. So we pass the amphitheater during your free time. You have the possibility to visit the amphitheater. Then 
the Trekkie main shopping street, Trekkie, <laughs> as this main shopping street is pedestrianized and lined with fantastic shops. Uh, beside the expensive Italian designer shops, uh, there is department stores where the prices are affordable. During the walk, not much time for window shopping, but you will have free time uh, to do some shopping as well. So uh, Via Mazzini is pedestrianized. At the end of Via Mazzini, we will visit Giulia's Balcony. And Giulia's Balcony is tourist attraction number two in Verona famous because of the balcony where after William Shakespeare's imagination, Romeo and Juliet used to have their nightly rendezvous. And then free time, time for a cup of coffee, but why coffee? Verona is very famous because of excellent wines as well. In the northern part of Verona, there is a very famous wine area named Val Pulicella, famous because of excellent wines. I'm personally very keen on a full-bodied red wine named Amarone, but if you prefer a good glass of white wine, I could advise you a glass of Lugana, which comes from an area between Verona and Le Garda, and not to forget this lovely dry sweet wine uh, sorry, this dry white wine named Soave. So mainly all dry wines, no sweet wines. You have time for a glass of wine. And we are going to show you the video of you overviews, pictures of Verona. So we are standing on one of the most beautiful bridges in Verona. It's the oldest bridge built in the time of the Romans, Ponte Pietra, first century after Christ. And as you can see, there is a fantastic view on top of the hill, a pilgrimage church. So the church with the dome is a church of the 16th century, the church of San Giorgio. And beside that church, you can see the cathedral which is famous because of fantastic painting. Further down towards the left, you can see the Roman theatre. This Roman theatre is used in the summertime for Shakespeare. Renate, do they still hold concerts in the theatre too? Uh, yes, they do have smaller concerts. Just during your free time in Verona, you have time to have a look around. Not only window shopping, but this type of shop is really nice to go in and taste one of the local specialities, like an ice cream, which is not a local speciality, it is an Italian speciality. So the amphitheater, a gorgeous monument of the time of the Romans. Have a look over here. Fantastic, all the cafes along one of the most beautiful prompts in the city of Verona. And the amphitheatre is very famous, especially in the summertime, for the open air opera performances, of course. We have seen the amphitheatre. And just have a look at the square named Piazza Erbe, which is a square a date of the time of the Romans. Yes, we're getting closer to Castel Vecchio, which is one of the largest castles built during the 14th century. So on your, on your right hand side beside the castle, you can see another Roman monument built very close to the river Adige, which is the second largest Italian river. So Verona. Now uh, Verona is the largest town in the region Veneto, with its almost 260,000 residents. But the capital of this region named Veneto is Venice, of course, Venice and its lagoon. There is about uh, 200 kilometers between Riva and Venice. Uh, no fear, there is a comfort stop on the way to Venice in a way that you can use the facilities. If we do have time enough, maybe a cup of coffee, uh, um, time for a puff, a ciggy as well. 
Then we arrive in Venice. Um, there is no traffic in Venice. Everything has to be transported by boat. So our bus drivers, Manuel and Mario, they bring us to um, a big coach park. And from there, we will take a boat that brings us into the city center. So with the next video, you have a taste, a taste of Venice. One of the highlights of Tristea Le Garda is the day trip to Venice, a must see at least once in a lifetime. During our stay in Venice, we're going to catch the water taxi. The water taxi brings us to this part of Venice, which is the most famous part of Venice, the Doge's Palace, the two columns, the Blick Tower. In the far distance, you can see the St. Mark's Cathedral, the inside of St. Mark's Cathedral during your free time, and the Rialto Bridge, which is one of the most famous bridges in Venice. A special time of the year is Carnival, celebrated during the early springtime. You can see the locals, but also tourists, dressed up in a very beautiful way, wearing the face masks. So, of course, one of the and of course, after the, after the um, walk through Venice with your tour leader, with your tour guide, there is a bit of free time as well. Uh, I don't know if you wish to see the Basilica. Uh, I personally love that part of Venice close to the Rialto Bridge with the colorful stalls, fish, fruit and vegetable market. Piazza San Marco, uh, the most important square, the largest open space in Venice with the lovely cafes. Mm, they might be a bit expensive, but close to, to the Rialto Bridge, there's lovely cafes and bars close to the Grand Canal as well, where you could have not only coffee, but let's say a Prosecco as well. Why not a Bellini, which is another famous drink uh, speciality of Venice, an Italian speciality and not to forget an um, Aperol Spritz. So free time, a bit of shopping, maybe a museum, a church, and then back to Lake Le Garda. And here we are back in Le Garda with the northern part of the lake again on a fantastic day. This is the little village of Torbole where we do accommodate our, our guests in Hotel uh, Piccolo Piccolo Mondo, situated very close to Le Garda's main inflow, uh, the river, river Sarca. And um, let me see. So this is the slide of the northern part of the lake. Yes, we can go further. Mm? Okay. So um, that was, uh, I will explain you something about what you could do on your, on your free day in Riva. So usually one of the first questions during the walk through Riva is, oh, what's that on top of the mountain? There is a little church, little during the evening, named the Church of Santa Barbara reachable on foot if you are an experienced walker and if you do have proper shoes. But underneath the little church of Santa Barbara, again lit up during the evening, there is a fortified tower named Il Bastione. And Il Bastione is a monument uh, built in the 16th century in Riva. From that Bastione fortified tower, the Venetians uh, had a very good overlook over Riva del Garda. By the way, Riva del Garda was a part of the Venetian Republic for a very short time, and they constructed this fortified tower. Until a few years ago, this tower was reachable on foot in about 20 minutes. But two years ago, they connected the town center of Riva and the Bastione Lounge. At Bastione, there is a bar as well with a lift. So if you don't want to do the walk, you take the lift and once arrived at the end station, you can have a uh, you can have something to drink or just simply uh, uh, or a meal also during the evening. And after your stay over there, you can walk back downhill. But if you're tired, if you don't want to walk back, you can take the lift that brings you back to uh, Riva del Garda. So that is one option there. Yeah, time for a cup of coffee. Okay, so we are having a bit of time for ourselves now. 
I would advise you aperitivo time, a nice Aperol Spritz, but if you want to take a cappuccino, that's all right too. Okay, um, so as you can see, uh, this speciality, this Aperol Spritz is a must drink if you do visit Le Garda. It is famous in all over Italy, but we personally are very keen on Aperol Spritz, which is a mixture, which is a cocktail made with um, sparkling, a bit of sparkling water, uh, uh, a liqueur which has an orange taste and a few drops of Prosecco. And they always give you something to eat as well. But again, if you just want a cappuccino, that is not a problem. Um, in River, there's much more to do. Um, if you wish to do a walk, a simple walk, if you're not very keen on hill climbing, you could walk from River to Torbole along the waterfront. Easy going. Uh, the prom of River is lined with a footpath and a cycle track. Taking your time in about, let's say, an hour, you arrive in Torbole, Torbole with a little port, with the cafes as well. There is a lovely walk in Torbole if you do like mountain hikes. And on your free day, if you want to do something completely different, you can visit Rivas Waterfall. Rivas Waterfall is easily reachable with a public boat, sorry, with a public bus. And there is buses going frequently from the hotels in Torbole and Riva to the waterfall. You have to bring an umbrella and a raincoat as there's a lot of sprays. And I think that you could spend about an hour at the waterfall uh, in, um, in Riva in Varone. If that is not enough for you, you could take the same bus that brings you to Arco, and that is my little hometown. There is a few miles between Riva and Arco, and Arco is famous because of a castle as well, reachable on food in about 20 minutes. There's a lovely cafe as well. Arco has a beautiful, bot a gorgeous botanical garden, and Arco is famous in all over Europe for extreme sports like rock climbing and uh, free climbing. A couple of years ago in the town where I live, the Youth World Championships of free climbing have been organized. So this public bus brings you from Riva Torbole to the waterfall, stop at the waterfall, Arco, and then back to Riva. Of course, in Riva's tourist information office, they do have the timetables and we can give you information about how to get to these places as well. Yes, the optional excursion. So three excursions are included. This excursion is not included in the cost of your holiday package, but I must say that um, the commentary of our customers after this excursion, they always say this has been the highlight of our holiday. Why? First of all, as we, do, we don't spend too much time on the coach, it is an easy going excursion. Again, like during the boat trip, we start at a good time, a civilized time of the day. And on this slide, you can see the crystal clear waters of Lago di Tenno. Lago di Tenno, we'll pass Lago di Tenno uh, by coach. And on the other picture, beside the lake, you can see the castle, which is a private property owned by a German family. And from this castle, you have a beautiful view, a panorama of Riva del Garda. The third picture is Lago di Tenno again. And the fourth picture on this slide with this cup of coffee are these three glasses of Vino Santo, holy wine, and three pieces of strudel. So we are going to visit a small village. We will show you the lovely video of the village of Canale in a while, and then a stop for a cup of coffee in a cafe named Café Miravalle. Miravalle means admire the valley. From Café Miravalle, you have a, a view, a lovely view over a lake named Lago di Toblino. That's a coffee stop. But before we uh, before we stop for coffee, a short walk through Canale. Okay, we can go with the video. Okay, we're going to make a nice walk. We do hope that you have comfortable shoes. It takes just a couple of minutes to get into the small center of Canale. This way, please.
Canal is a lovely village situated at a drive of about 10 minutes from Riva del Garda. So the local weather forecast, you've seen the sweet corn on top of the balcony. And here on the banner, you can see a local speciality named polenta. Okay, we're going to have a look into this beautiful little shop. And we have a bit of time to, to look around. So we're going downhill. Take your tour going further into the Casa degli Artisti. This way, mind your step. La Casa degli Artisti, founded by a painter named Giacomo Vitone many, many years ago, owned by the Italian state nowadays. And this is a spot, this is a house where during the summertime, international painters or artists can spend short summer holidays. So that was the stop in Canale. We have about an hour in Canale. You have a bit of time to take pictures from Canale. Uh, you can see Le Garda as well. Uh, Canale has only 50 residents and during the winter time, they do organize Christmas markets as well, but we talk about the Christmas markets in on with one of the next slides. Okay, so after our coffee stop at uh, um, Bar Miraval takes, let's say, about 40, 40 minutes before we are going to stop for a meal. Uh, this meal is organized in an old farmhouse. And the family that owns this farmhouse transformed this farmhouse years ago into a rustic restaurant where our meal is included in the cost of the, this optional excursion. A uh, light meal with a glass of wine. So you see on the picture, you can see uh, the restaurant. And on the other picture, you can see myself and Jada. She is the lady chef. Uh, and she, she cooks, she is an excellent cook as well. And she uh, offers us a taste of grappa as well. I call grappa rocket fuel, as grappa arrives at a percentage of about 40%. So after that grappa tasting, we're going back to Le Garda. So we start around 10 and we are usually back around four o'clock. And that is usually the last excursion, the last excursion of the week. We'd like to show you, we would like to show you a video of La Casina. Really lovely. Yes, during the beginning of the season, let's say in March, and at the end of the season, November and December, there is no uh, navigation on the lakes, so there is no boat trip included in the cost of your holiday package. And that's the reason why we organize a day trip to Bolzano. Bolzano distance of about 60 miles, 100 kilometers. And we travel along a motorway named Autostrada del Brennero, which is the Brenner motorway. As this motorway starts very close to the Austrian Italian border, close to the Brenner Pass. And Bolzano is situated closer to Austria than to Le Garda. There is only 
let's say, 70 kilometers between Bolzano and the Austrian Italian border. And during your stay in Bolzano, you will notice strongly the Austrian German influence of Bolzano. Bolzano was a part of the Austrian Hungarian Empire until the end of World War I. A short walk through the city center and a short walk through the city center. On this slide, you can see the most important square in Bolzano, named after a German poet. And on that square, during the month of December, the beautiful Christmas markets of Bolzano are organized. Bolzano is the Italian city where the first Christmas markets were organized. I'm sure that you noticed the colorful roof of the Cathedral of Bolzano. You have time to visit the cathedral as well. Yes, and then on the next picture, a strange, a strange person, a picture of the Iceman. Uh, I'm sure that you have seen documentaries at home on, on the telly, on the television. He's not really my type, but uh, he was found back in the Italian Alps between Italy and Austria in the 1990s. And a large number of archaeological finds were found back as well, all on display in all on display in Bolzano's archaeological museum. Eventually, you have time to go by cable car as well to be seen on the last on the last uh, picture. And at, in, at, at the background, you can see the Dolomites. Uh, these snow-capped mountains are the Dolomites, another UNESCO World Heritage Site. And that area is reachable with a little train as well. Yes, the Christmas markets, Christmas markets in Verona, in Bolzano, in Arco as well, the town where I live. There's always a nice cozy atmosphere, the stalls where you can taste local specialities, where you can buy your Christmas presents, uh, the mountains, maybe a glass of malt wine. During the month of December, we do have groups for Christmas and New Year as well. And during that, uh, that type of holiday package, Christmas and New Year, we visit um, Bolzano. Yes, and then time has come to say goodbye. A famous song, Andrea Bocelli. <laughs> so unfortunately, time has come to say goodbye. So do you have everything? Your flight tickets, your case, everything? You left the key at the reception desk? Come on, we're going. Okay, we have arrived. If you want to follow me, I'll show you where the departure gates are, just over here. I hope that you did enjoy. Have a safe flight and ciao. Ciao, ciao, ciao. So, um, so and that was it. So we hope to see you in Legarda or see you again, as we usually have a lot of repeat customers. By the way, I we received an email uh, from Fred and Anne. Uh, they, were, they were with me uh, a couple of years ago during our day trip in Bolzano. Uh, I, at the, during the, are you there? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember? I will explain to the rest as well. Um, thank you for your nice email, and I never forgot. To, I will never forget that event, that, that uh, <laughs> moment. I will explain the rest as well. So um, we had our walk through the town centre of Bolzano, and I said to the members of my group, "So, ladies and gentlemen, we a landmark for you today for your way back to the coach park is this billboard with a Coca-Cola sign." So, okay, um, free time begun and every, everybody enjoyed the, the free time in Bolzano, a glass of wine, a piece of apple strudel, uh, sausages and so forth. But for the way back, they, they took the, the billboard away completely. So we were all disorientated. We didn't know where to go anymore. They suddenly took the billboard away. So the meeting, <laughs> I had to spot <laughs> exactly where they all were. Do you remember? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. We do, we do, we do. <laughs> Good luck. We do, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your nice email. Thank you. <laughs> Ciao, Anne. Good. Ciao, Fred. Ciao. 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 See you soon. See you soon. Uh, good to see you.
Good to see you. Good to see you. You look good. You look good. Thank you. <laughs> Miss you. Miss you. Colleen. <laughs> So, um, yeah, that was it. I hope that you did enjoy. If there is questions, feel free. I hope that I will be able to answer them. Go ahead. <laughs>